This week on Chocolate of Comics, DC pays tribute to the late great Stan Lee, and Aquaman is breaking all the box office records. All that plus our comic book picks of the week right here on Chuck Loda Comics. Hey guys, welcome to Chuck Loda Comics, our first show of 2019. 2019 is here, people. Happy New Year, <laughs> Shauna. Welcome to the future. Happy New Year to you too, Chuck. The future looks bright. Thank you very much, guys. <laughs> Thanks for watching Chuck Loda Comics. Uh, if you haven't clicked the subscribe button, please do so. Join us here every Sunday. Just a reminder, guys, Chuck Loda Comics is sponsored every single week by these guys over here. Cold War, I know it says Scoriers, but Cold War <laughs> Games, Arts, and Entertainment. We announced last week uh, Cold War Games has a new game coming out. What? Fight Your Friends, guys. We showed you the trailer last week. It's a new card game. We got a few more details on the Fight Your Friends game. Yeah. It comes out uh, in Mar February. Yep. February. comes out in February. What this is, they actually uh, gathered some of the greatest comic book artists and uh, comic book creative people working in the field of comic books. They all got together to make this game. All, it's a card game. It's like a table tabletop card game. Uh-huh. Um, all the cards are going to be illustrated by some of the greatest names working in comic books. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. Really cool. It's like a big gathering of uh, comic book greatness wow. to do this game, Fight Your Friends. Uh, it comes out in February. You can find them on their Kickstarter. Just search for Cold War or search for Fight Your Friends. Uh, for more information and order, I think you can pre-order your copy of Fight Your Friends now on Kickstarter. So cool. I'm doing it. <laughs> you should. You should really check it out, guys. And uh, of course, go to shopcoldwar.us or just coldwar.us. Um, on the internet for more information on these and other amazing board games. They basically do board games with comic book properties. That's so cool. So check them out. Cold War, Squarriors, Fight Your Friends, all these great games. Lady Death to come. Lady Death <laughs> coming out later in the year. They're doing a Lady Death uh, tabletop game, so which is cool. sweet. More information on that as it comes out. But Fight Your Friends coming out in February. Um, we're going to get into our favorite comic book picks of the week. But before we do, let's go ahead and break down this week's nerd news. All right, so kind of a slow week in the world of comic books, Shauna. In, yeah, in no the world kidding. of nerd news, in the world of fandom, not a lot happened. It is the holidays, yeah. so everybody's kind of taking time off. But one news story that kind of caught my eye that I thought we should totally talk about, DC Comics, in a really classy move. Um, if you have any DC books on your pull list, you may have noticed a full-page ad that they put out uh, paying tribute a memoriam ad for the late, great Stan Lee. That's so cool. Shauna, you've seen Stan Lee many, many times in person. Yes. You've seen him on stage talking to audiences. Stan Lee, if you've never seen him uh, talk to a panel of people, he never misses an opportunity <laughs> to remind the audience how DC was crushed by Marvel, how yeah. Marvel just trampled the competition. <laughs> Every time I've seen him, he always manages to mention how, sure how <laughs> Marvel crushed DC back in the day. Well... To kind of pay tribute to that, DC put out a full page ad. It's a full black page, and it says in big white text, uh, with utmost respect from the distinguished competition, Excelsior. And it says Stan Lee, and it has the dates and stuff. That's so cool. That Love this ad. Very it's, upstanding of them. <laughs> yeah, and if you know a little bit about Stan Lee and, and kind of the rivalry between DC and Marvel back in the 50s, 60s, 70s, it's a really thoughtful kind of memoriam ad that it they put is. out here. Because, I mean, the distinguished competition. Yeah. Love that. <laughs> I know. It's DC's last little jab at Stan Lee. Yeah, in a good way, though. Yeah. Obviously. <laughs> so go go out and pick up some DC uh, titles. I don't think we had any DC titles on our, on our pull list this week. No. But, but we need to get one just so we can have a copy of this yeah. ad. So it's really, really cool. It's very cool. The last great little tribute to Stan Lee. I'm sure we're going to start seeing these things kind of drop off. Yes. Um, outside sure. of post-credit sequences in the movies. But pick up a DC book. Find this ad. It's going to be a really cool thing to kind of hold up. Maybe even put in a frame. Yeah. It's kind of I neat. Way to go, DC. Speaking of DC. Oh, my gosh. Aquaman go. is making all the beans at <laughs> the box the office. It is collecting all the <laughs> shells on the beach and trading them in for big bucks at the worldwide box office. Currently, Aquaman. Nobody saw this coming. It is currently standing as the highest <laughs> DC movie ever. Isn't worldwide crazy? gross. Beating out Wonder Woman. Beat that out Wonder Woman. Me. Beat out the the uh, previous uh, standing highest 
uh, DC movie, which is Batman vs Superman, mm-hmm. trampled it. We had to actually had to cross out um, all of our original show notes and add them because <laughs> they made like another hundred million dollars uh, over this week. That's crazy. It's currently sitting at eight hundred and eighty-seven million dollars worldwide in just three weeks of del- release. Or even at three weeks, I think we're only at two weeks. I think of we're like at two and a half weeks. Well, at the time of this taping, I think we yeah we're probably at about three weeks. This is the third weekend, I think. Going what's, on now. What's even more crazy? So it's it's going to join the one billion dollar club. Sure. I don't think anybody saw this coming. Nope. For Aquaman, I know. nobody had big hopes. Whether you <laughs> loved the movie or did not like the movie, you got to tip your hat. You got to tip your trident to the amount of money this thing's making. But it's funny because another uh, interesting little box office record is its domestic pull. Yeah. The lowest ever right? DC opening weekend for any DC movie. It only made $66 million opening that's weekend. That's insane. I think that's probably a low for all movies <laughs> it's really low it's, well, it's not a low for I all know, movies but, but for a movie of that caliber mm-hmm. of that size to be opening at, at christmas time for aquaman That's to insane. only make 66 million dollars it didn't come close to the next nope. uh, lowest the which, next lowest um opening weekend for dc movies was justice league at 93 million so, so. It, <laughs> it missed it by 30 million dollars yeah. domestically That's um, insane. i think the current and correct me if i'm wrong i think the current uh, take domestic is only 238 million yep that's correct. That means there's $649 million this movie made just in the foreign yeah, markets alone. it's nuts. It's 72% of the total worldwide take is foreign. Wow. Isn't that nuts? 73% of the gross yeah. is just in the foreign markets. Yeah. I know China, probably the biggest, I think they made almost $300 million yep. just in China alone. And it hasn't even opened in Japan yet. There, I mean, there's another $100 million right there <laughs> right. once it opens in Japan. It's, it's almost assuredly going to hit the one billion dollar mark i can't see it not i mean it's it's, it's, it's crazy it's going to uh interesting uh note the second weekend drop off yeah From weekend number one to weekend number two it only dropped off 23 percent which in comparison to all the other dc movies dropped off like 60 <laughs> percent the, the, so. the typical drop off yeah. week one to week two is usually i mean a 40 percent drop off from week one to week two is good yeah uh 60 percent. i mean we've seen sometimes with other dc movies because everybody rushes out the first weekend they see it right and then there's a big drop off in fandom it only dropped 23 percent weekend one to weekend two that's insane it's got to be because of word of mouth i mean i think people lost hope in dc movies after justice league and then of course we had wonder woman come out and it was awesome but then here comes aquaman nobody wanted to go see it on yeah. opening weekend but those of us that did Word of mouth spread, and mm-hmm. that's why I think the re- they held the retention. For what, the did, week. what did what uh, did Batman vs Superman make uh, worldwide? Batman vs Superman opening weekend worldwide opening weekend, uh, which I think might be the current uh, sure the current uh, run the the current uh, one hundred sixty six million one hundred sixty six million. 166 million worldwide. Yep, opening weekend. Wow, <laughs> wow, that's and, and Aquaman crazy. only made sixty six million. Yeah. And it hasn't even opened in Japan yet. So this, so this movie is going to have legs. People are still rushing out to see it. There's nothing really coming out this weekend. Mm-hmm. So I could see this thing easily breaking the $1 billion mark. I don't think it's going to hit the $2 billion club. Nah. Not a chance. <laughs> but a $1 billion, <laughs> it's almost definitely going to happen. That's so crazy. So good, good job, job, Aquaman. Good job, DC. Good job, James Wan. You made a movie that people want to see. And Jason Momoa, of course. And Jason Momoa. <laughs> getting that international flavor, that international box office. Yeah. Which is dope. Too bad Americans didn't really rush out to see it. I know. It. It's so interesting to see that that huge uh, foreign take. That's, that's crazy to me. I think, you know, if you think about it, Aquaman really does have, kind of have an international feel to it it doesn't feel like a, a strictly american film right like you watch trailers for wonder woman it's set in world war one right something about wonder woman even the world war it's set in england but it kind of has a, a, a american sort of vibe to oh, it sure. definitely batman definitely superman right. feels very american aquaman seemed very international very it, worldly beloved i that's think it's a, a very good point i can't honestly pinpoint one scene in aquaman that actually took place in america yeah. i mean i mean the lighthouse yeah. but that was not a big part of the movie right so the sea belongs to all humans. That's right. <laughs> and Atlanteans. So last little bit of nerd news, guys, as we do every single week, we're going to give you our C2E2 update. Woo-hoo! The Chicago Comic and Entertainment Expo comes out March. Uh, it's coming to Chicago March 22nd through the 24th. Mm-hmm. They just announced uh, more excellent, totally excellent guests. I know. If you're coming to C2E2, you can meet Mr. Matt Smith. Yes. The 11th Doctor from Doctor Who and all you fans of The Crown. Yes. Matt Prince Smith. Philip. 
Coming to coming to C two E two also Matthew Lewis he played Neville Longbottom in the Harry Potter movies. Okay, Shauna, I know you're a big <laughs> Neville Longbottom fan. He's joking, people. <laughs> Not so much. Um, in the world of comic book guys, uh, Ashley Witter, yes, creator and uh, illustrator of the wonderful Squarriors That's comic right. book, and of course the Star Wars Doctor Afra book. Ashley Witter is going to be there. So go meet Ashley. She's oh, totally so cool. awesome. She's part of the Cold War gang. That's right. One of the illustrators with Cold War. And of course, my favorite illustrator of all time. Uh-oh. Tom Richmond. Yes. From Mad, Mad Magazine. Magazine. <laughs> my buddy. I've read his book. His actual like how to draw yeah. cartoon Characters. books. Yeah. Caricature books. Um, he's always an awesome guy. You can always walk up to Tom Richmond's uh, table and he will draw you. He does the the big long spreads. Like Every time yep. you read Mad Magazine and you see where they do like a... The- the mock character. Yeah, the mock of the movies. They'll do like a, yep. you know, man of <laughs> man of veal right. instead of man of steel. That's always a Tom Richmond story. And he's going to be there. You can go up to his booth. He will actually do a cartoon Mad Magazine sketch of you. So cool. So he does caricatures at uh, these conventions. So go up to Tom Richmond's table. Have him do a little mad version of yourself. Super nice guy. Super, Super nice buff, guy. too. It's crazy. He looks like you could kick your ass in Dude's carved second. out of wood, man. Tom Richmond's kind <laughs> of a badass. He's <laughs> carrying them heavy pens around right? for so many years. I don't know. <laughs> carrying the weight of Mad Magazine on your shoulders. Aww. Get you some broad shoulders. So, guys, C2E2, March uh, 22nd through the 24th, coming to Chicago. Oh, I can't wait. So excited. We will see you there. Chuck Little Comics is going to have a really, really big presence. That's right. So, on uh, that's kind of the nerd news for the week. Kind of a slow nerd news. Shauna, you got a something in the old R2 What's cooler? That, R2? Thank you. <laughs> that's 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 how we do it at Chuckload of Comics. We you don't know where we're hiding our beers. <laughs> we hide them we, everywhere. We got candy bars in every drawer and a beer in every droid. <laughs> so our two favorite comic book picks of the week. Shauna, you got them on the table mm-hmm. over there. Um Conan the Barbarian returns from the writer Jason Aaron. Marvelous writer over at Marvel. He's doing tons and tons of stuff. I he know. just wrapped up one of the most legendary Thor runs that ran on and on. The, yep. uh, still doing Thor. Still doing a Thor run. And the uh, Scotty Young run of Deadpool. Yes. If you're not reading the Scotty Young run of Deadpool, <laughs> oh my gosh. it's the best run of Deadpool to come out in a long time. It's probably yeah, my probably favorite since ever. The Brian Pusain issue. Yeah. It's like, oh, it's so good. And the Jerry Duggan run. Uh, yeah. There was a lot of really great Deadpool runs, but this one is my favorite run of Deadpool, I without, agree. A, without a doubt. I'm not going to give you all the dirt of this particular issue, but basically what happens, a, uh, Deadpool gets hired by a theme park animal uh-huh. <laughs> to go, uh, he puts out a hit on another theme park animal. So you got Deadpool running around this like Disney World type thing. He's going to kill this other theme park animal who is selling drugs out of the theme park. <laughs> so funny. So hysterically illustrated. You got to check it out. It's the Scotty Young run of Deadpool. And it's Scotty Young writing it, not illustrating it. So yes. that's usually we're used to seeing Scotty Young illustrations, but... This is a writing gem. <laughs> yeah, what about Conan? Do you like Conan? Oh my gosh, Conan was great. I was not expecting to like this book. No offense, Jason Aaron, but holy cow, it's awesome. It's bloody as hell. It's a it's violent super book. super gory, but so interesting. And it's like, I think when you open it, you realize it says the life and death of Conan. So there's obviously going to be an end at some point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah I'm, I'm super stoked. It's not funny at all. Uh-uh. It's very much a blood bath yeah a lot of blood a lot of hacking and slashing people dying in uh, the arenas mm-hmm. uh, there's this awesome witch character that conan gets uh, abducted by yeah. and he has to <laughs> kill her it's so good guys issue number one of conan on shelves now tons of variant covers you can also get yep. like everybody and their brother did a variant cover yeah. for conan <laughs> including scotty young <laughs> scotty young of course did one i have not seen that one yet i haven't either i want to see it back, i bet though. it's hilarious i bet it is too <laughs> So there you go, guys. Lots of great books that came out this week. Some honorable mentions was the final issue of the Stranger Things run. Yeah. And uh, nearing the final issue of the current story arc of Uncanny X-Men. Yep. Loving both of those books. Uh, Pick those up. And that's kind of our comic book picks of the week, Deadpool and Conan. Let us know what you guys are reading. Leave it in the comments section. That's kind of it, guys. Shauna, Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you, too. Kind of slow news week. But it was kind hey, of a slow news week. It's, like you said, it's the holidays. So. Yeah. Well, <laughs> the DC honoring Stanley thing was great, and the Aquaman breaking all the box office records was worth mentioning in my mind. Very true. So, guys, uh, join us here every single Sunday on Chuckload of Comics. We break down, we try to break down all the kind of the nerdy news, things happening. We give you our favorite comic books. We talk about 
any special headlines happening in the world of fandom every single Sunday. If you haven't clicked that subscribe button, please do. Big shout out to everybody at the Comic Core. Yes. And of course, Comics with Bueller. You guys did two of the coolest live chats last night. I know. It was so much fun. We were sitting at Home Run in Bar and Pizzeria watching <laughs> both of your live shows. They were absolutely spectacular. Everybody at the Comic Core was dressed up in like three-piece suits yeah, you really classy snazzy, guys way man. to go so if you haven't checked out the comic core find them on youtube look for comic core look for comics with bueller amazing amazing weekend live shows where they talk about everything but comic books to wrestling movies everything in between everything everything nerdy it's a massive community you guys need to check out comic core and comics with bueller yeah that's it guys have a fantastic 2019 we'll see you here next sunday and we'll see you at c2e2 march 22nd through the 24th have a fantastic week. Bye-bye.